My name is J.D. Morera. I'm originally from Madrid, Spain, and I found a cultural home here in Centro Cultural at Slan. And this is una práctica. What inspired me to be an artist is I started school when I was three. It was called Los Maristas in Madrid, Spain. And we were demanded to do the alphabet. And every letter had to be exactly, there were four rows. And I always had trouble with the U, since the U is a loop move, and I could never repeat it. So at those times, the correction to imperfectness was a slap in the face. And yet with as many slaps as they could give me, I basically couldn't achieve one U to look exactly like the other U. Then this particular nun, La Monja Juanita, she did an art contest. It was uh, really a triple triptych with a show, the crucifixion, etc. She saw something in me, and from that point on, somebody that I always kind of feared became more or less a consolation. So something told me that there was a magic to be able to take an aggressive person and transform him into an admiring, docile person that really cared. So she never cared on how I did my use from there then on, because she knew there was something inside of me that went beyond a desire for exactness. With that in my background, I, the power that the art had, I've never left it. And it created an identity for me for the rest of my life. The San Antonio art, it's really within the Hispanic community because regardless of the skill level that's been developed, everybody does intent to put themselves into it. And by seeing people really putting themselves into it, it's an inspiring thing to know that even if the subject matter or the techniques are out of their skill, format themselves is in the work and having been in the, in the world of art for so long and learning that by, to appreciate art you almost have to hear the painting instead of see it and then once you start to hear the paintings you can hear the voices of the people who are creating it how they want to put their identity which is very important to them that painting will reflect Raul or Mando or Jorge, it won't be just an interpretation of a billboard. Even if it's a realistic theme or a traditional theme, it still carries a little bit of inner signature. And for that, it confirms that the most intrinsic part of art is the inner signature of a person's own character, their own world, and their own interpretation of what reality is. Well, the, the importance of uh, Centro Cultural and Atslan for me is the realization that when you're a uh, transplant from one country to the other, if your work is basically based on culture, you become culturally homeless. And you're not going to satisfy that feeling by joining a bowling league or going fishing every weekend. Something has to nourish your mind, your body, your soul, and more, more than anything, to reinforce your identity of the culture you come from by the people's similarity of that particular culture. Centro Cultural and Atslan is generous in the fact that they admit and they consort and they allow just about anybody to go ahead and participate within their organization. They don't say, come, all you all, and then filter it out as something that fits them. They don't choose artists 
as a stockbroker would choose ties, this color for this occasion and that color for that occasion. They let everybody participate with in the project of their own mind that they want to be with the art level that they have. Learn how to fight the bad intended or good intended, bad advice that most of the families are going to give you. Be prepared to suffer the rivalry of the other artists and members within your own family that see that the perception you have of yourself is because you still have contact within yourself. You haven't really accommodated to the demands of society. You still contact yourself in order to create. You still demand privacy, isolation, and every time you do create something, just remember you're leaving something of proof that you existed, which is a total luxury in a world of CDs, technology, where everything requires a machine in order for that identity to be revealed. You're creating something that will prove who you are long before you're not. Okay, my painting, my painting I've been very selfish about. I think one of the hardest things was going to the university and having to argue my own identity. Everybody suggested, everybody had an influence, everybody tried to force me into what they conceived as artists who perform. One day, I decided to get away from this influence and I went to buy records. And I went to buy records in a level of music that I had never learned before. And generally, most of my youth, I was spent listening to the power of classical music. Then being in America, I decided to go to jazz, which I hadn't really listened to. But then I saw that the improvisation, the affinity of musicians to their own instrument, and the daringness to generate new sounds was something I was going to listen to because I knew there was a power of self-identity. As my life progressed, there was times that being able to do classical artwork, I saw that in order to generate income, some kind of an edge, a proficiency of tightness was required in order for people to interpret their own relevance. As it progresses, I realize that uh, this is about me, for me, and me. And so my most strongest work really started when I started to do non-objective art, just to grab the same intensity of an idiot savant that gets close to an instrument that's intrinsic within his capacity to execute without any previous knowledge. Once I saw that kind of work generate out of me, and from that point on, that would be my treat to myself. Non-objective art, that would at the end, the final product would be dynamics and beauty and power. And within that context, uh, it's an unrivaled thrill. <laughs>